Welcome everyone to this video on two truths and one lie. Now, in another video, I mentioned how many of these math routines and math tasks honestly come from party games. Okay, so let's look at how this party game transitions to a math activity. Now, for starters, I just want to point out that all numeracy routines um, promote discourse. And this one, this activity is no exception. The routine focuses on the art of justifying your thoughts. Paul Lockhart had mentioned mathematics is the art of explanation. It is. And this routine helps with that. So in this routine, two truths and one lie, it's literally what it sounds like. You create two statements that are true and one statement that's a lie. And obviously the statements are math statements. Now I just want to show you how you can vary this activity. For starters, you can have a prompt or an image that students are using in order to connect it to the math statement. So for example, I'm providing a visual of a 10 frame and my statements are based off this image. So the statements being um, four more makes 10. So if I look at this 10 frame, does four more make 10? Six more makes 10. I'm looking at that and you could probably see some misconceptions there because it is the number six. The counters are six counters. So a student can have a misconception uh, confusing the six there. Or the other math statement is four more fills up the 10 frame. So different from four more makes 10. Obviously you would see that the lie here would be that six more makes 10 because six and another six would be 12 and not the 10 that is needed here. So that's one way you can use this activity, the math statements, but with a visual. The next way is just straight up equations. So which one of these math statements, and I'm not gonna read them to you, but which one of these equations is a lie? Hopefully you can see that the last one, 1 tenth times 25, that answer should be two and five tenths instead. So hopefully you saw that that last statement is a lie. So we can have an activity where it is just equations or even expressions and students are finding truths and lies in that. Now, one thing I wanna mention about this routine is that literally almost every single math standard could be addressed with taking on this activity. This one specifically comes from Math Before Bed and I'll provide that link. So I'm not gonna read this activity to you, just pause the video and find the truth and lies in this. Okay, so hopefully you found that B is the correct answer. It says here two circles are more than half, but if I look at the images here, there's only one circle that's more than half. So B would be the lie. Now this one comes from mashupmath.com. Again, I'll provide a link. And actually this company has a hell of a lot of downloads, PDF downloads where you have like a bank of uh, two truths and one lie. So I recommend checking that out because they have a ton of resources you can use. Now, I love the way that they incorporate the statements, right, the math statements, but with visuals as each math statement. So students are given uh, an image and the quantity that that image represents, and then they would have to do a couple different things. They would have to look at the math statement in a number line form and see if that makes sense, right? They would also have to look at the second math statement where they're computing and then comparing, which is great. And lastly, they would just do some computing for that last math statement. So I just love the way they kind of change up the technique of the two truths and one lie. Again, that's why I would highly recommend that you grab those resources from Mashup Math. Now, something that's not done too often is actually flipping it, actually making it one truth and two lies. So in this one, these are math statements. We saw it as visuals, we saw it as expressions or equations, and now we're just seeing them as statements. Um, pause the video, read this, and figure out which one is true and which two are lies. Now let me explain why I like doing that mix up every once in a while. The purpose of two truths and one lie is for students to justify and explain their choice in the math statement. It is not enough for you to present this to the class and say, okay, find the lie, great, great job. No, there has to be a lot of explanation and discussion around this, right? Because remember, communication um, and discourse is a huge part of this. 
So not only are students working to solve, but they're actually working to justify. Now, as always, you know me, I love for students to take ownership in things. And of course, you can do the two truths and one lie activity with your class, but I also think that we should give them the opportunity to create these on their own. So I've provided you with a couple of templates that you can use. So the way that they would work for starters is that you would just give them the template, right? And you can give them the topic. So for example, on the left here, you see teen numbers. So I'm asking the class, I want you to come up with two truths and one lie based off teen numbers. It could be statements, it could be visuals, it could be expressions or equations, it could be anything that the students come up with. They're not necessarily answering it or filling out their justification because this is just them creating the task. When you have students do this, then they can swap with one another in order to solve it. Another thing that you can do is actually just collect them and use it as your uh, whole group activity, two truths and one lie. So you can just take their work and make it the routine. And think about how excited the kids get when it's like, oh shoot, that's my two truth and one lie. Like they love that stuff. I also gave an example here for higher grade levels. So if you gave the students a topic like multiplying fractions and students can make statements off of that. Again, they can switch. Again, you can just collect them, use it part of a whole class. You can make this a center where students are creating them and then they just have to choose when they get to that center, they just have to choose a different one to solve that's not their own. So I'm gonna be providing you with these templates. Now the templates could also be used for you, for you to actually fill out and use that as what you give the students for two truths and one lie. And all the students would be doing would be filling out the bottom piece where they decide, okay, B is a lie because blah, blah, blah. So these templates are for you as well as for your students. Okay, everyone, I'm not gonna take too long in this video. I think you get the gist of the activity. The main thing is that you wanna have some discussion around it. You wanna make sure students are justifying and explaining why they chose a truth or a lie. And you wanna make sure that you give the students an opportunity to create these themselves. It just deepens their understanding of math concepts. I cannot wait to see all the truths and lies you create in your math classroom.